If you've been paying attention to electoral politics in America recently, you might have heard of the Democratic Socialists and their titanic rise in the past few elections, especially Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in New York. But many people, both inside and outside of the media, don't really know what Democratic Socialism is, so we're going to break it down. And to help do that, we are joined by Maria Svart, the National Director of the Democratic Socialists of America. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, it's great to have you on. This is, I have to assume, one of the greatest periods of interest in your organization and the philosophy and ideology in general. Oh, absolutely. We had our biggest membership growth in history in the past week. And I saw something like more than 4,000 new members inside of one week is certainly significant. Yep, yep. So I just want to ask you, just in general, if people are not familiar with democratic socialism, how would you describe it? We all want communities where we can live with dignity and comfort. And democratic socialists believe that only we, the 99%, have the power to make that happen. We're the ones who elect people. We're the ones who, through our labor, make this country and economy run. So we believe we can come together across our differences and democratically run both our society and our economy for people instead of for profit. And what it will take is just standing up to the greedy few who rig our economy and then point the finger at immigrants or disabled people and others who are the most vulnerable in our society to keep us fighting over crumbs and create a new system where we all have a voice, major decisions that affect our lives are something we actually participate in. And we don't have a tiny, tiny elite that dictate every aspect of our lives. We believe that there are fundamentally two types of people in society, the people who work, and the people who take the credit and the cash. So obviously, one democratic socialist and another democratic socialist will probably have different priorities in terms of policy and things like that. But what do you see as some of the policy areas that in general, democratic socialists are likely to talk about when they're running for a reelection? What are they pushing for? I think that one of the biggest is Medicare for all. It's a campaign that we as an organization have taken on as one of our national priorities. And it's an example of a transformative reform, which is the kind of thing that folks that we help elect to office should be fighting for and will hold them accountable to fight for. So it's uh, it's it's an important reform because it doesn't just provide health care to more people. It actually takes health care, which should be something everybody has as a human right, takes it out of the marketplace and puts it in the public sphere uh, so that everybody can access it. Um, and then it prevents things like being undermined by some people being in and some people being out and all the other things that happened with the half measures that we've seen so far, up to and including the Affordable Care Act, which was a step forward, but as we can see, wasn't sufficient is now being politically undermined. So we call them transformative reforms, things that materially change people's lives, things that people have to build a mass movement to fight for um, and things that transform the power dynamic. And in this case, it would take all this huge segment of the economy out of the hands of the private insurance industry and big pharma and put it back into the hands of healthcare providers and patients. Uh, so that's an example of the kind of policy priority that we would push for. But as an organization, we are member run and member funded and our members decide what we do. So we have chapters in all 50 states fighting on everything for rent control to abolishing ICE, um, to Medicare for all, to fighting back against what the Supreme Court did to undermine public sector unions. Uh, just a whole host of things uh, we think about. How does this hurt working class and poor people? And what kind of policy would fundamentally change the power dynamic? Well, what's interesting is, is you just cited a bunch of your priorities that you're working on right now. And I, I think objectively, they're pretty mainstream concerns. They're the things people are talking about and yet, your organization, the philosophy in general, people describe it as being some sort of fringe or radical radical thing. I know Sean Hannity and others on the right have been attempting to conflate democratic socialism with socialism, even particular socialist experiments. So how would you differentiate the two? Democratic socialism on the one hand, especially as it applies to the US, because I know the European version might be different in some ways, and socialism more generally. First of all, I would say that we shouldn't be looking to Sean Hannity <laughs> and the right to define who we are and what we stand for. But I agree um, with that. <laughs> right. Um, so really, it's about people having a voice, and um, we, you know, there have been attempts at socialism throughout history that, for a lot of reasons, a lot of historical reasons, um, ended up uh, not being very democratic. 
but our vision is really something that's not radical. If you look at people in this country, look, I was just in Iowa last week visiting a chapter. We have a bunch of chapters in Iowa. I was visiting a chapter and uh, they were talking about how they uh, rent was too high in their town. The, the housing stock was falling apart. Landlords weren't being held accountable even to the existing regulations. It was very expensive and people found that unfair. And when you talk to working people, we canvas and you talk to people on doors, uh, they're very upset about that. So this idea that we shouldn't have that kind of living condition is not a radical thing. It's just radical within the accepted political discourse that exists in this country, which is extremely narrow. And what we do and what we're excited to have other folks starting to um, join us in doing is really pull the Overton window to the left as much as possible. Like Bernie Sanders just said that Medicare for all is mainstream. That's because people hate the healthcare quote unquote system as we have it now. So the reality is we are looking at the root of all these problems that millions of Americans are feeling. And we're providing a solution that actually resonates and a vision of a better society that it is attainable. Uh, we just have to get folks to understand their own power in workplaces because we do the work. We make this, the economy run um, in the political sphere because 46% of people didn't vote in the last presidential election. But if we all voted um, and we held the politicians accountable that are trying to make it harder to vote, we actually believe that we can fundamentally transform the society. And that's ultimately what we're looking for. We're not really looking for half measures. We realize that in the immediate term, um, that may be all that's politically possible. But we think if we organize more people, uh, a lot of folks agree with our ideas and will join us in building a mass movement for change. So of course you have uh, organizations like, like the DSA obviously, but then you also have uh, people who identify either as members of the DSA or just as democratic socialists philosophically who are running for elected office. And of course there have been some high profile wins recently, including uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, who was on our show last week. Um, many in the media appear to have been completely blindsided by her, by her victory. Are there other candidates who identify as democratic socialists that you think people should be taking a look at? Oh, absolutely. Uh, DSA uh, has gotten newly involved in electoral politics or reinvigorated um, in electoral politics in the last few years. Uh, so last year and this year, we've really focused on supporting folks to state and local office. Um, I grew up during the era of the evangelical rights rise when they uh, ran people for um, city council and school board races. So that's one of the approaches that we're taking. So a lot of our candidates are really local. Uh, but we have a couple of candidates. Uh, we have a lot of folks that made it through primaries and now are going into generals. Um, in Oakland, for example, we have a candidate for the California, California State Assembly, Jovanka Beckles. Um, she made it into the uh, general and she's running up against a neoliberal Democrat carpetbagger that's gonna get a lot of real estate money. And so we're really fighting to support her in her race. Uh, we have other folks that made it through um, primaries and now are gonna be in competitive generals. Um, and we have a candidate in New York, actually Julia Salazar, that's running for the New York State Senate. We're really excited about, um, she is sort of the New York State, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, <laughs> uh, that the New York City DSA chapter is really mobilizing for. And she obviously got a huge boost after um, our recent win and, and we're really excited to keep canvassing for her. Yeah, I've seen quite a bit of uh, social media activity around her candidacy in the past uh, week or so. Yes, we're very online. <laughs> <laughs> 100%. Uh, well, Maria, I wanna thank you very much for joining us and helping uh, talk a little bit about the DSA and democratic socialism, we appreciate it. No, thanks for having me.